Greetings everyone and welcome to this video on reporting for the Bayesian independent samples t-test. First we'll discuss the results for hypothesis testing. The null hypothesis postulates that there is no difference in reading scores between the groups and therefore effect size delta is equal to zero. The one-sided alternative hypothesis states that only negative values of delta are possible and assigns more prior mass to values closer to zero than extreme values. We assigned a delta, a Cauchy prior distribution with r equals 1 over root 2 or 0 0.707. And so this prior and posterior plot actually shows that the base factor indicates evidence for the alternative hypothesis, specifically a base factor of 4.328 in favor of the alternative hypothesis which means that the data are approximately 4.3 times more likely to occur under the alternative hypothesis than the null hypothesis. This result indicates moderate evidence in favor of the alternative hypothesis according to Jeffrey's levels of evidence as mentioned in a previous video. The error percentage is actually less than 0.0001% which indicates great stability of the numerical algorithm that JASP offers. In order to assess the robustness of the base factor to our prior specification of 0 0.707, this base factor robustness check, uh, robustness uh, plot shows a base factor as a function of the prior width r. And across a wide range of values, actually, the base factor appears to be relatively stable, ranging from 3 to 5 or 4.5. Secondly, we will discuss the results for parameter estimation. Of interest is the posterior distribution of the standardized effect delta, that is the population version of Cohen's D, the standardized difference in mean reading times. For parameter estimation, uh, we assign delta a Cauchy distribution of 0 0.707 as mentioned. This prior and posterior plot shows that the median of the resulting posterior distribution for delta equals negative 0.577 with a central 95% credible interval ranging from negative uh, 0 0.088 to negative 1.176. And if the effect size is assumed to exist, uh, there, there remains substantial uncertainty about its size. Uh, with values close to zero having the same posterior density as values close to one. That's it for this series. Uh, thanks for watching.